Some people make games for money, and some do it for recognition. But at the Indie Game Jam, we met a group of designers who do it for the love of the games and the process involved. Initial Indie Game Jam kind of was a bottom-up thing where we were thinking about how fast 3D hardware had gotten and we thought, well, I wonder how many sprites 3D hardware could render. So we wrote a little test program and we found that we could render about 100,000 sprites per frame at like 30 frames a second. And we we're like, wow, you know, with a technology like this, you could do something really wacky and weird and like it wouldn't necessarily sell a million units, but it might be like, you know, it might get the creative juices flowing and kind of inspire other people to do crazy stuff. So we sent out mail to a close group of friends and we said, why don't we do this thing called the Indie Game Jam? Well, it was amazing. We had 14 or 15 people that we invited and we got 12 games done in four days from that point just took off so uh in game jam uh two which is actually our third because we of course as programmers start everything at zero the emphasis here is on how do we make physics affect gameplay not just special effects Deus Ex 2 and Half-Life 2, a lot of these games are licensing physics engines nowadays, and people are really trying really hard to get it into gameplay, to make it affect something more than just ragdoll or, you know, oh my guy died cool. For the most part, people have failed to get it into gameplay in a meaningful way, except for, say, racing games or flight simulators. And so we did 2D physics, so it's at least possible to do something in four days. It's kind of a little bit of a risk because physics is a very touchy kind of technology. So we did support, but then after two days of doing support, everyone was kind of rolling, so we were like, all right, well, you know, we got two days left, we could kick something out. So I did a little game where you shoot the hamsters out of the gun, and it's kind of like a lemmings-ish sort of a game, and your objective is to get all of these hamsters to the goal. You can set them on fire, and you can douse the flames, and you have to interact with the level to get the hamsters to the swirly end levels. As everyone knows, hamsters are highly explosive, we lit, I participated last year, um, but this year I contributed the physics library, which was used as the basis for the entire jam. I've worked on the engine for maybe four or five months total. In my game, I spent probably a day and a half total. The game is music-driven, where there's a strong techno beat, and everything in the game world is dancing to the music, so all the objects are rocking back and forth. Uh, and the player controls a little shrimp. The last two moves ahead, L1 and R1 uh, get straight into the tail of the head, and X straightens out. Um, and you can, uh, by the straight now, it's like a whip straight now, and he, uh, a lot of, like, jumping moves were kind of emerged once I got the straight now thing in. Last year, I was convinced that I was out of the game industry and didn't want to make games anymore, and Chris invited me to the jam, and I had a great time, and sort of just rediscovered the joy of making games. And my favorite is the uh, is Heim Gingold's plant game with the swaying trees. And that game, not only is the aesthetic beautiful, like it's got this great, like really clean aesthetic and the motion, the music goes with the motion really well. You have like the swinging plant and you have to like swing it to pick up stuff off the ground. And you're an insect. And so I made it so that one player isn't strong enough to swing it. So you have to work together and synchronize your swinging motion and then pick up stuff. Actually, I'm kind of sick right now. And part of the reason for that is that uh, I didn't get enough sleep over those four days, and now I'm paying for it, but it was a lot of fun. If you watched what was happening earlier today, you know, you get this vast proliferation of creativity and innovation and implementation, and in a weekend, you know, that's unheard of. You don't need to have this particular group to run a game jam. Anyone can do it. All you need is a code base, some time, and some space, and some junk food, and the ability to sleep for a few days less than you normally would. The key thing that people should walk away with, hopefully, is this inspiration that games can be this amazing art form on par with music and film and books and all of these things and we have so much work to do to get there and that we all just need to sit down and really start doing this work. You can download all 17 titles from the Indie Game Jam by heading to the website at IndieGameJam.com.